Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're changing things up a little bit and I'm going to share some really cool features in a program called Art Text. Art Text is a Mac only app, but it has a ton of really cool features and you can actually use your own lettering and apply 3D effects to it. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. So we're going to start on the iPad first and I'm going to show you how I create the lettering and export it from there, bring it onto the computer and then we're going to have a lot of fun with adding all of our 3D elements. So I'm going to hop over onto the iPad now. Okay, I am on my iPad in Procreate. I've created a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 DPI. And now all you wanna do is make sure that you have white as your background. And on your very first layer, we're going to add in our lettering. And it helps if you have an opaque brush for this. If you have a textured brush, it could be a little bit more complicated. So I'm using my free signature brush and I will leave a link to that right in the video description. So I've got my signature brush selected. I'm making this fairly large. My size is 38%. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. So it's pretty large. Actually, I can go all the way to 40. And the important thing to remember is when you're adding elements within lettering, you don't want to have a ton of letters because things can get really confusing and you won't be able to discern the separate letters. So I would recommend choosing a word that's on the shorter side and make your letters nice and bold so you can see them when you fill them with different 3D elements. So I'm just going to write out the word fall. Okay, once you have your letters all ready to go, let me make the weight of this a little more balanced. I'm going to add in some extra elements around my word. That way you can see in art text how you can manipulate additional layers on top of your main lettering layer. I just want to make sure you can see all the possibilities with this. So I'm going to center this up a little bit, create a brand new layer right above it. So I'm going to add in some really simple swirls around it. Now we're going to export this to our computer and then we can pick it up from there. But the really important part here is that we don't have a background color because if you have a background color, it's going to want to fill the entire background color with whatever 3D element we're filling our lettering and everything else with. So in order to export this on a transparent background, it's really easy. All you have to do is come to your layers, turn off the visibility of your background color layer, so just uncheck it. Now we have our individual elements without a background color. So in order to export them, we have to export them one at a time. So we're going to turn off the visibility of our swirls and just export our lettering. So come over to the wrench, go to share and you wanna choose PNG. So you can either email it to yourself or if you're close to your Mac, you can airdrop it. So that's what I'm going to do with my lettering. Okay, after you export your lettering, now we're going to export the swirls. So turn off your lettering, turn on your swirls, come back up here to the wrench, go to share and once again, choose PNG. Okay, now that everything's been exported, we're going to hop onto our Mac computer, open up art text and bring them in. All right, so I am on the computer and I've just opened up Art Text. So this is exactly what you'll see when you first open up the program. There is default text right here and the document is automatically sized at 800 by 600 points. If you wanna change the document size, all you have to do is go to edit, document size, and then you can change it to whatever you'd like right here. You can even change the units. I'm just going to leave it as the default for this tutorial, but just be aware that you can change it to whatever size that you would like. All right, so we need to get rid of this text, but before we do, I just wanna show you, if you would prefer to just use a font instead of creating your own custom lettering in Procreate, Procreate is totally optional here. I just wanted to show you how you could use your own custom graphics within the program. But if you wanna use your favorite font, this is where you'll do it. You can adjust the text right here. Over here, you can select the font that you want. So you'll get your font palette and you can choose any font that you have on your system installed. So custom fonts are totally fine. And then if you wanna apply effects really quickly, if you come over here to this little four stacked hamburger, you can see we've got all kinds of default options that you can just bring in as well. So that's pretty cool, but they're going to bring themselves in on their own layer. So I, I can just select and delete these, but that's a really quick way to apply effects if there's any default ones that you wanna just start with or adjust or just use um, as is. So that's pretty cool. We do not need this text layer because we created our own custom lettering. So I'm going to just select the text by clicking on it and then hit delete. And then I'm going to come over here to these shapes. And this is where you will bring in the artwork that you sent to your computer. If you sent it via email, you just wanna download it onto 
your computer. If you airdropped it, it's already in your downloads folder. So to access it, you're just going to toggle this down, choose custom folder, choose downloads over here. And then I switch this one to list and it'll be right up at the top. So I can bring in my lettering first. So just hit open and now it'll show up over here and all you have to do is click on it and it will bring it in, but it's probably going to be a little bit on the smaller side and that's totally fine. Now without resizing it at all, I'm going to bring in those flourishes that we drew. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. So toggle this down, custom folder, select it, and then hit open. And now they're both going to be the same size. When I click on my swirls, they're all size exactly as they were in Procreate. Now I can select both of them by just dragging out a selection and then I can scale it up. I hold shift when I scale up to keep everything proportional. And I'm just going to kind of center this. So now we can adjust the individual components. I actually want my swirls to be just a little bit larger. They're feeling kind of tight right here. So you want to do all of this in your layers. So if I click up here, I can access my layers. So I can lock my lettering that way I don't grab it by accident. So just click on the lock. And now when I select, I know that I'm only selecting the swirls and you can see up here it's selected. So I can hold shift and just enlarge these just a little bit more. Okay, so now the fun part begins. We get to start applying all these really cool 3D effects. So we're going to start with our lettering and then we'll do the swirls and then we'll add in a background and then everything will be done. So I'm going to lock my swirls and I'm going to unlock my lettering. So come back to your lettering layer and just hit the lock and it will unlock it. And you can kind of see these little dots around here. So that means it's selected. And once it's selected, all of the effects will take place over here on the right side of your screen. So you can see we can either fill it with regular color, we can add a gradient to it, or we can add in a default texture. So there's all these patterns in here and you can change the scale down here of those. So there's a bunch of options here. Um, you can also apply some of these default 3D effects, but we're going to go into spray fill and spray fill is where all of your 3D elements are. So once you have the spray selected, you can see there's nothing right here because we don't have it filled with anything. In order to fill it with whatever you want, you're going to hit the plus sign right here. And I've already got my leaves by default, but if you toggle this down, you can see there's all kinds of different options already added in here. So you can choose, you can play around, there's some really cool things you can do. So if I selected these light bulbs and I just add them in, I start getting all kinds of different light bulbs right here. Um, if you choose something by accident and you want to get rid of it with it selected in this panel, you just hit the minus sign and that will delete them. Okay, so we're going to go and grab our leaf. So I'm going to hit the plus, toggle this down to leaf, and I'm going to select a bunch of different leaves. You could select them all if you want. So once you have your leaves, now we can just come down here and this is where you're going to dictate how they're going to appear within your lettering. So my density is at the very lowest number right now, which is why we can't even tell that there is letters right there. But if we increase this, it's going to make way more leaves. So it's going to just become denser. I'm going to bring this down to about three and see what that looks like as a starting point. And these leaves are pretty large. As soon as we reduce the size, you can see our letters are going to start appearing. So I'm going to bring it down and now we can start really seeing our letters. So unfortunately the size doesn't have an increment associated with it so I just kind of watch what's going on as I toggle it down. I still want the leaves to be really obvious so I don't want them too tiny. Um, plus our swirls are going to be built up with smaller leaves anyway. So I can zoom in by just hitting command plus on my keyboard. And now we can get a nice close look at what our leaves are looking like. And down here, now we can adjust how random they are with their position. If I bring this all the way down, you can see that they're just kind of stacked on top of each other. But if I increase this, you can see they're populating more randomly. So that's kind of fun. You can also randomize the size. So you'll have lots of large and small ones. If I bring it all the way up, you can see the size differences are pretty extreme. I'm going to keep these a little more consistent, but I still want some variety. So I'm going to bring mine to about there. And then the angle is really fun. Um, if you bring this down, you can see they're going to start rotating. If you bring it down all the way, they're all going to be facing the exact same direction. 
So we're going to randomize the angle pretty well. I leave this one up at max. And then align to normals. I'm not totally sure what this means, but I usually click it on and off just to see if I like the arrangement better um, or not. You can see some of them flip. So I don't know. I don't mind it with it off, so I'm just going to leave it off. The light adds kind of a shadow to it, and I don't like that, so I leave that one off. I do want to add a shadow, though, because this is going to cast a shadow and make it more 3D looking. So all these top leaves are casting shadows on top of the bottom leaves, and I really like how that looks. Um, and then distribution map, we don't need to do that either. So the next thing we're going to do is just add a subtle shadow on these. So I'm going to go into effects. I'm going to toggle on shadow. And you can see immediately, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see how lo this looks as a whole. This shadow is way too strong. So you can adjust your shadow by hitting the little gear icon. So I'm going to reduce the blur way down. I don't want it that blurry, but I do want a little bit of a blur. I'm down to 1.1 here. Now if I grab this little circle in the middle of this larger circle, I can move it to position where my shadow is going to be cast. So I want my shadow cast down into the right. I'm going to say that my light source is right up here. And it's definitely way too dark for me, so if I click on this color square, I can reduce the opacity. And that's what I want because this opacity will blend it more seamlessly into the background rather than just changing it from black to gray. So it'll look like it's gray, but it's going to blend because it's got transparency now with the opacity. So I brought my opacity down to 20%. And I like how that feels. I think I want it just a tad bit blurrier. We'll go to 1.5. All right, so that shadow is all done. And now we can move on to our swirls. So we're going to lock our lettering come up to our swirls, unlock our swirls, and now our swirls are selected. And now we're going to do the exact same thing to hit everything home. So come up here, click on fill. We're going to come to our spray fill. We're going to come down here and hit plus. I'm actually going to choose my leaf 3D just so I have a bit of a different variety of leaves with these ones. So I'm going to once again grab a couple of fall colors. These ones are going to be very small. So I'm going to toggle these down until I can see my swirl, but I want them to be a little sparse. So I'm keeping my density at one, and I think I can actually remove one of my red ones. So let's remove that. And for this one, we're keeping it very simple. We're just going to add a very subtle shadow to it. So I'm going to add shadows here, and then I'm also going to come to my effects and do the exact same thing we did before. So toggle on shadow, hit the little gear icon. We're going to reduce the blur way down because that's crazy. And then move your shadow. I'm going to move it in the same direction as our previous shadow since the light source is similar. And then reduce the opacity of the shadow down to 20%. Now we're going to add in our background color. So in order to add in your background color, you want to hit the plus sign. To, let me lock our swirl since we're done using those. You're going to hit this plus sign, not this one, this one right here. And when you do, you'll get a background option. So you're just going to tap on that and that will automatically put it at the bottom so it's behind everything else that we've done so far. So in order to adjust your background, once again, you're going to come over here to the right. You're going to hit fill. And now we want to make sure that this is selected, this color option up here, and we're going to change it to plain color. So click on that. And now if we click on this color square, we can bring up our palette and change the color. So I am going to go for kind of a brownish, reddish kind of cinnamon color. So you can either grab from your color slider up here, or you can eye drop a color that already exists. So that's what I'm going to do just to give myself a head start here. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper and now I can eyedropper any color I would like. And I'm looking for more of a dark red color and then I'll change it a little bit to give me a little more brown. So now that I have my red, I can slide this up a little closer to my yellow to change it to that brown that I'm looking for and then I can darken it by grabbing this slider and moving this one. So I think I want just a little bit more red so I can bring this down a little. So I still have my brown, but I also have some red in it. And we can always change this later. If you're not happy, you just come right back here, make sure you're on the right layer, and then you can adjust it by clicking on this color square again. So I'm going to move forward with this one. The next thing we're going to do is apply a gradient. So we, so it looks like there's a spotlight behind the word fall, and then it gets darker around the edges. So in order to do that, we're going to add another background layer. So come down here again, hit 
hit plus, hit background, and this new background will be right above the previous background you just did. So with this background selected, we're going to come over here, and this time it's going to be a gradient. Right now this is a linear gradient, so it's fading from top to bottom. We want it to fade from center to the outside edges. So just toggle this down and choose radial. And you can see we've got a dot right here in our square, and you can move this around to adjust where that radial is going to appear. And I want that right back here in the center. And I want the edges to be darker and the center to be lighter, but I want my center to be just a little bit brighter than it currently is. So if I click on the center node, I can bring up my color palette again and bring this closer to white so that it will make it brighter. If I want to make either of my ends a little bit darker, like this one up here is lighter than this one, I can click up here and then just darken it slightly. And now I need to blend this with my original background color. So in order to do that, we're going to come down here to effects and then where it says blend mode you're just going to adjust this to say overlay and when we do this you can see if I turn this new background on and off you can see that slight shift and if it's not as bright as you want it to be mine I want mine to be a little bit brighter so I can just make my ends a little bit darker and my center a little bit brighter and that will give me a more intense spotlight. You can also adjust where the transition occurs. So these little lines, if I bring this closer to the edge, it will make my spotlight larger. So I can bring this down. And now if I turn this on and off, you can see that nice focal point right where I have my lettering. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is add a nice texture to the background. And we're actually going to use one of the default patterns that comes along with art text. So I'm going to create a new background layer. So just click on the plus sign, and this is our third background. So it's going to appear above the previous two. And now we're going to come to our pattern right up here where it says fill hit pattern and I'm going to scroll all the way down until I find these leaves, leaves two. So just click on that and you can reduce the size of these by coming down here and I'm going to bring this down to about 0.2 and then you can change the color of this too. So I can move this around and change the color. You can do this for any one of these patterns, these default patterns, but I'm actually going to leave this as the original. I just wanted to let you know that that's something you can also change. You can also change the position of this. You can rotate that around. That's pretty cool. And you can rotate where the pattern is laid as well. All right, so I also want to blend this with my background, my original background. So I'm just going to come back to effects. And if I come to blend mode, I'm going to come down to multiply. And you can see it's very subtle back there. Let's see what overlay looks like. That one's a little bit brighter. And I think I also want just a little bit more red in my color. So I can do that too. Just bring this down, brighten it up a little. So if you want to share this to Instagram, for example, you need to export it rather than just saving it. If you save it, you save it as an art text file. You can export it as your different file format. So in order to do that, you're going to go File, Export, and then you can choose what type of format what type of resolution you want. So these are your export format options. And then you can, you can also adjust the size here too. So just keep that in mind. So that's how to create 3D leaf lettering using art text and Procreate, which is totally optional if you want to bring in your own custom lettering. And you've already seen how you can use any font in the program as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more for more tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is everytuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.